Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. Hello, welcome to Make It Clear. My name is Stan Pons, and I'm your host and Bible teacher of Make It Clear and the president of Florida Bible College. I'm so glad that you all could be with us today because we have a very special program that I believe very much could be designed with you in mind. You know, those of you that have been listening to Make It Clear for a long time, that we generally teach the Bible chapter by chapter and verse by verse. But then there are times that we meet special people. And so we take a break from that expository Bible life application teaching so you could meet these people and to be able to hear the testimony of what God has done in their life, how they've been encouraged, things that have happened. And we do that not to lift up these people, but to lift up the Lord, to let you know what God is doing. And it's our desire that maybe through their testimony, you too would be drawn closer to the Lord. Well, today, my dear friends and listeners, I want you to know we have a very delightful couple. Now, they're going to be delightful because of what God has done in their life, but you need to know that they have gone through some of the deepest, darkest waters that they possibly could have gone through. In fact, you might even say that they have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, and then God did something very, very special. So I want you to be able to hear their testimony. We're going to do a little bit of question and answer and tell you a little bit more about them. So let me begin by introducing them to you. This is Kirby and Julie Merrill, and I had the opportunity to meeting them when they were in some very, very dark days in their life through a good friend of mine, but also one of our producers here at Make It Clear and my good friend, John Bain. Now, John met them because he was invited to go by and visit them. So maybe, John, if you have a moment, if you'll do this for us, would you share how you came to meet the Merrills and then how we became a part of their life as we were hearing their story. We're going to let them tell their story, but how did you meet them so that brought them to our radio program today? John, would you share with us, please? Absolutely. I had received a call from somebody who had attended uh, Pensacola Christian College, and I had attended Pensacola Christian College prior to attending Florida Bible College. And I had not attended college with this person, but they found me on Facebook knowing that I was in Cleveland and had attended Pensacola Christian College. And this gentleman contacted me, said that he had a couple from his church that were in Cleveland at the Cleveland Clinic and were all alone and just needed somebody to be able to pray with them, to spend a little bit of time with them. And he requested that uh, I do that. And I gladly accepted. And my wife, Lynn, and I both went down to the Cleveland Clinic and met with Julie and Kirby. I remember walking into Cleveland Clinic and first meeting Julie in the hallway and Kirby was in for some tests. I had not met him yet, but talked briefly with Julie as we were getting ready to go into Kirby's room. He was brought back from the tests. And quite honestly, when I saw Kirby, I thought this man is close to death and it was a very sobering time. But the interesting thing was, though physically he did not look well, spiritually and emotionally, He was cheerful. He was praising the Lord. He was saying how the Lord had really taken care of him through this and was counting his blessings that the Lord had given him. And this was quite shocking considering the physical appearance that he had at that time. I think that the story that they have to tell that will be wonderful for our our listeners to hear, it's a story of grace and mercy that the Lord gave to this great and godly couple. That's how I learned of them, Stan, and I think uh, their story will be very interesting. It really will be. And if you've just tuned in to make it clear, I want you to know that today is a very special program because we're interviewing a couple of people that have gone through some very challenging times in their life. And John just mentioned how he met them in the hospital. And so we're talking about this couple named uh, Julie and her wonderful husband, who has really the, the heartbeat of this entire event. His name is Kirby. So let's ask this question to you guys. Uh, This would be Julie and Kirby. Maybe you both could answer this, maybe Kirby more. And that's simply this. What brought you to the Cleveland Clinic and almost to the point of death where John would come in to provide some encouragement and prayer uh, and some words of comfort to you? So what brought you to the Cleveland Clinic and so close to death? So, Kirby, welcome to the program. You bet. Thanks, Stan. And um, I mentioned earlier that we really enjoyed hearing from you and, and that your church was helping by just holding us up in prayer. And for the most part, 
in our lives, that's what it's got us through all this is just prayer and, and the Lord's blessings and the mercy on us. I started out having a colorectal cancer in 03, 04. Years went by. Everything was doing pretty well until 13. Had some more difficulties and was um, diagnosed with reoccurrence. It turned out it didn't, but I had had complications from that prior cancer surgery in 03, 04. That led us to uh, have a lot of problems. Um, they treated me for cancer, radiation, chemo again, over-radiated me terribly, uh, poisoned me with radiation. And then we wound up at Little Rock, actually, uh, Arkansas. They worked on me diligently and, and got me to the point that they thought I was going to be all right and sent us home. Well, I wasn't all right and I couldn't eat. Our local doctor, Dr. Bentley, he he would come and actually do house calls. I was laying here in the living room uh, on pretty much hospice doses of pain meds. I was in so much pain, and he would come and pray with me. Even on a Sunday morning one time, came out before his church services and, and prayed, and I was uh, being too fed and couldn't take anything by mouth. And uh, we got a call from a nurse out of Arkansas that helped my wife to to find out why we, or that we should go to Cleveland, I should say, and a lot of finances involved in getting airlifted to Cleveland. Some of our church members were praying. Our pastor was praying. Um, we didn't know how it was going to work out. Brother Ronnie and different ones, they found a uh, an air service, Grace on Wings, that was far and away cheaper than anything else. It, it was We couldn't afford at that point. We were uh, completely tapped out. They lifted it, airlifted me to Cleveland, and that's how I got to Cleveland to uh, start receiving. And they were gracious enough up there to say, if, if you can get him here, and we'll just see what we can do with, without any pretense of saying we can fix him, but just, you know, just get me to there. And that's, that's how I got to Cleveland. Now tell me, Julie, from your perspective, you know, wives want to help the heal, encourage. Uh, in fact, many wives are just saying, I wish it happened to me and not to them. What were your feelings when you noticed that your husband, even though was first diagnosed with cancer and then secondly, misdiagnosed with cancer, but then over radiated to the point where his um, internal organs were just almost destroyed and burned. And you didn't know if he was going to live or die. And you watched him suffer and go from one hospital, one clinic to the other. What were your emotions? Can you speak to us as a wife, as a woman, as you're watching your husband go through this? I have to say it was like one of the hardest times. I was trying to to work and then I'd run back home and give him medicine and run back to work day and night. I was doing that and I just kept asking God, what can I do? What can I do every day? And finally, we had different people come from the church and family members come and sit with him so I could leave him for a few hours at a time. But it was two nurses that I had here that helped a lot too, Betsy and Kathleen. And they came out and they stayed the night with me. They prayed with me. And every day I'd just say, Kirby, do you want me to keep looking? And every day I'd call and call different clinics, hospitals all around the United States trying to find somebody. And then it was through that nurse that said, you call, you know, Cleveland Clinic and you call this doctor and you talk to this nurse. And well, I just said, Kirby, you want to go for it? And he said, yes. But it was just it was kind of a fog, you know, it was, I was just praying and just taking, you know, one minute at a time, you know, I just had medicine lined up for him. And I just felt like I was trying to keep him alive till I could figure out <laughs> what God wanted us to do. You know, and it was, it's well, kind of a blur, I have to say. I remember when John had called me on the phone and said, would I please pray for Kirby and, of course, for you? And he explained the situation. And, of course, John has a big heart. He's on our staff. He loves people. And he certainly hurts when they hurt. And, of course, with Lynn being there, he was watching what was happening. And we jumped into our prayer mode. We encouraged others to do the same and to watch your journey. But when you're in that bed all by yourself now, Kirby, uh, what kept you strong? What kept your faith where John could say, even though he looked like he would die, at any moment, there was a big smile on his face. You know, I don't know people that are like that. You know, I know those who are Christian, but even being Christian, some of them get their eyes off the Lord. So what kept you so strong? Uh, you didn't have a name it and claim it attitude, but you did have a trust in the Lord. How did you have that spirit of confidence during this time of great, great uncertainty? It was, um, it was very strange. I came from a, a background that almost was name it and claim it, to tell you the truth. But we've been uh, in a very solid Baptist church here in Stillwell. Our pastor taught very scriptural ways of praying. And we just prayed constantly, Lord, whatever your will be done, whatever your will be done. We just repeated that. And 
we didn't really have any answers, but he always told us that the Lord, um, we think he's late, but he's never late. He's always on time. And so it's hard to talk about it without tearing up, but he just, um, we did, that's how we did it. <laughs> you know, some people might think that, uh, I'm just so dull in mind or so thick headed that I couldn't realize I was dying, but that wasn't it at all. I completely laid it in the Lord's hands and, it was just um, through God's grace. I ran across the, I don't know if this is all right to read this real quick, uh, Stan, but I please do. I ran across something in a book I was, I'm reading currently that it said in, a, in the quote, I would address it to someone, but it's anonymous. And it just says, he who doesn't see God in everything will eventually see God in nothing. I just seen God in all, all through this. I didn't know why I was going through it exactly. I know it drew me the closest I've ever been. I, I just felt like I could step into heaven at any moment. I was down, I currently, um, and I'm usually always about 200 pounds, and I was down to 125 pounds. Couldn't even take a teaspoon of water by mouth, but I still knew that God had something in, point in store, and that's, that's what kept me going. He would just smile, and he'd say, well, I win either way. Either I'll go to heaven, or I'll be here on earth with you a little bit longer. That was amazing. There's a man in the Bible by the name of Paul. And he basically said the same thing, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to straight between two different places to be in heaven with the Lord or to be here with you. And what's more needful is for me to be here with you for right now. And so he did have that longing for heaven and he knew that he'd be in heaven and he wouldn't have to deal with all the earthly pains and issues that he went through. But on the other hand, he wanted to be here, not so that he would just merely get healed, although he did ask the Lord for that. But once the Lord said no, he then basically said, you know, God's grace is sufficient for me in my weakness weakness he's made strong. So now I'm going to glorify the Lord in glory in him, even through my weaknesses. And he said, so now I'm going to continue on for the Lord. So in other words, he said, I'm here to serve others, not for me to just get well. And I'll serve him whatever I have with whatever I have, because his grace is sufficient for me. That certainly sounds like that has been both of your attitudes. Yeah. Yes, it, it sure has. It's uh, And you know, it all, I still have to always come back to our local church, our local congregation mm-hmm. and family and, and have one of the greatest wives in the, in the world next to me, because I don't, I look, I would look at her and wonder how she was going through this, watching me laying there dying. And it, amazing. We, I counted one time laying there that probably 60 people or more came out from our local church at one point or another and ministered to us in varieties of ways from even mowing our yard and weeding our flower beds. It, it was just um, an amazing thing how God pulls people together like that. Well, you know, in a few minutes when we're bringing our program to a close, I want to go over some bullet points of what we're going to call take-home points using you as our model. And even though you might think, man, I went through those deep waters, I'm still having some issues now, you have been a model, and we're going to show what we can take home from your life. So you've added value not only to mine and to John, who's here with us on the program, but to the thousands that are listening to us all over the world. So your impact is really great. Let me pause for a moment and welcome our listeners. Listeners, some of you may have just uh, jumped on board and you're wondering what is going on. This is Make It Clear. My name is Stan Pons. I'm your host and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. We usually teach uh, scripture, sermons, etc. But from time to time, we break from that to bring to you men and women who God has used in a mighty way that we want to have you hear about so that you can be influenced by them as well. And today we have Kirby and Julie Merrill. They have uh, gone through some very very deep times. In fact, we would say they were in the valley of the shadow of death, and that during this time that they have still remained strong for the Lord. And his was that he had cancer, and then he was sick again, and they diagnosed him with cancer again. And with that, they decided they needed to do chemo and radiation. The problem is, is that he did not have cancer again, but they did the chemo and radiation. And of course, when you put that on someone who has another issue, but not cancer, it really racks up your body. You add to that the fact that they over-radiated him, and that brought a whole lot against him. And yet, here you are, listening to him speak, sharing with you that he did not get angry at God, mad at God, denied God. He just gave it to the Lord and said, I'm going to live one day at a time for the Lord, and I know he has something for me. And here he is today. 
Would you share with us now, Kirby, where are you with your health? Where are you in life? Where are you in ministry? You know, what is God doing now in your life? Because apparently it's very easy to see you've gotten past all those, um, I guess, uh, what the world would say, you know, you really had some bad luck. All right. Well, we know there's no such thing as luck, but that's what they would say. Yeah. How are you doing now? What are you doing with your life today as you get past all of this? Well, I don't know that I'm exactly past. Um, it's much better than being at Cleveland, even though we had some great, um, met some tremendously great people in Cleveland, and John and Lynn uh, ministered to us. I, I look at my life, and I think, you know, if somebody out of the blue called and said, go visit somebody in the hospital, but they went far beyond that in ministering to us and ministering to my wife. But anyway, I, uh, I'm i still fighting um, or uh, day-to-day issues, um, too, too numerous to, to, to talk about, but recently I, and I, and I don't have much feeling in my legs, in my left leg, especially I tripped and, uh, broke my hip. And so I'm two months into recovery from that. And, uh, in fact, today we were at the doctor, got released to start walking again. John remembers some of those days when I was learning to walk again out in Cleveland, but I just, uh, as far as ministry, I think a lot of times, um, and I wouldn't even have have said that I would even do this program today, not that I don't appreciate you and and your staff. It's just that I want to spend every minute that I can just lifting up the Lord and uh, telling people how great he is, because I think people sometimes look at life as in a a nutshell, like, well, my life's going to be this, this, and this, and God has other plans. And just because plans change doesn't mean that's the end of life. And that's kind of the way I look at it. Yesterday, for instance, a neighbor was burning or his fire got away from him, got over into our field, burned about 12 acres of our land over here. We had fire department out here. Today, I'm at the doctor's office and he released me to walk again. So I guess that's where I'm coming from is that I just, you just don't know. You wake up in the mornings, we can't see the future, but God can know the future and he takes care of us more than we can ever uh, anticipate. You know, what you have is an attitude of gratitude in the greatness of God. I began making a list of some take-home points for our folks, and maybe you'll add to this list here. So let's go over some of them. The first one is, when you listeners hear of someone that is really going through deep weeds, but you don't know that person, you know of that person, someone told you that, and they're having a downtime, but you're requested to maybe go by and visit them. Maybe very much like what John did, get in the car. I know you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone, meeting someone you've not met before, but yet at the same time, you know you want to do this. And then just think of the words of encouragement, how that Julie lit up when she saw someone she never met before, how that Kirby lit up with a smile when he met someone he never met before, a stranger, but at the same time, one that would give encouragement. So let me encourage you listeners, a take-home point would be, do those hospital calls. If you're a pastor, do those hospital calls. You'll never know, even though you may not know how to do one well, just go to the hospital. Don't stay too long, but while you're there, be kind and gracious and give a word of encouragement at a time of prayer. Here's another take-home point I've heard from what Julie and, and Kirby were saying, and that is that the church got involved in their life, whether they were right there in their hometown or where they had to travel to other cities and other states, that it was the church at large coming together through local churches to reach a brother and sister in the Lord. And so I hope that you're going to a solid church that is very concerned at bringing glory to the Lord by loving him. But the great commandment is love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And I find that if you really love the Lord, you're going to love those whom the Lord loves. And if you love them, you're then going to go after them to encourage them. So be a part of a church that's involved in other people's lives. It'll cost you time. It'll cost you effort, cost you energy. It may even cost you some money, but it's an investment that you'll get back from the Lord for what he's done for you. And then also, he requested prayer. And people were praying when they couldn't visit, when they couldn't bring food. They were still praying. And so maybe even right now, coming to your mind is someone who's going through some some dark days, maybe through their own valley of the shadow of death. You could be praying for them. And then I think of, in this case, the mate. This mate was a wife. 
And she was there doing what she could to relieve the suffering and the uncomfortableness of her husband, doing with cheerfulness, giving up, sacrificing. You know, when she entered into marriage, she didn't know that he would be going through this time and perhaps not be like other husbands would be at this time of his life. But at the time she got married, the, the vows that she made was, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, Till death do we part. And so she made that vow to God before family and friends and to her husband, and she followed through with it. And you have to know that God honors that with special blessings. And maybe it's flipped the other way. You're a strong husband, but your wife is weak, going through things that she never brought on herself, and yet you're going to be true to your marital vows. And you have an example of someone who has now, because so, they can rejoice together. And I mentioned a moment ago the grateful spirit that he has. They both have. In other words, no matter what God throws at them or permits or prescribes to come into their life, they're going to be thankful in all things, which is this challenge, and they'll be thankful for all things because even that gives them an opportunity Mm -hmm. to bring glory to the Lord. And then I look here at his life. He said, you know, I don't know if being on this program is, you know, what I could be doing, but You know what? Wherever you are, both Julie and you, Kirby, and those that are listening, wherever you are, you look for God in it as an opportunity to further the gospel, an opportunity to be able to speak for Christ. So wherever God puts you, it's an opportunity to share with him. I like what he said when he said, looking for the Lord in everything, or you won't see him in anything. We're not talking about pantheism here, but we are talking about a sovereign God that is alive on planet Earth, and he is there serving you. So let me give you a phrase, folks, that you might be able to take with you for an encouragement, a balance of the person of Christ. He is what we call large and in charge. You know what that means? That means he is bigger than any adverse situation that comes your way. He may hurt you like there is pain that Kirby is going through, but he will not harm you. He will not make you less of a person to reduce the rewards you can get when you are in heaven. He loves you unconditionally, so don't always blame everything that's happened to you and live in a world of guilt, that he loves you unconditionally just the way that you are. And I want you to know that God at the same time is faithful. He will take care of you. Here you have two people that have gone through a lot of challenges financially and socially and all of that, and yet God is faithful to take care of them. So he is large, but he's also in charge, which means that he is all-powerful. But he's also not only large in charge, because that sounds like he's so distant, but he's also near and dear. I can only imagine when there was a time that Julie had to go off to work, and there was those few moments that perhaps even Kirby had to be all alone. That even in the aloneness, the quietness of his bedroom laying in bed with pain and uncertainty of the future, he experienced the presence of the Lord through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit who resides within him. So the Lord is near to you. He will never leave you nor forsake you, so you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear. And so you need to know that, that he is near, but he's also very dear. Kind as people are, they cannot be God, but God can always be God because he is God and he is dear to you no matter what happens. The good news is we all have a home in heaven if we've trusted Christ as Savior. The greatest news is we have a home in heaven with the Lord forever, and we have a new body that will never know any pain. How grateful we are to have you, Julie, and you, Kirby Merrill, on our program today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much, too. And I'll never forget John and Lynn, ever. <laughs> Kirby, what would you like yes. to say in closing? I, and I and I would like to, I might not have state, stated it right. I didn't mean I wouldn't be on the show necessarily i just i didn't want to just do it because of me I, if i only did this so that we could help somebody else and that's where i was really headed with that that we don't know who's going to listen to this and and um, i think that the lord's going to use this program today to help somebody through some very tough times and we really appreciate you sam Thank you very much. And let me throw out an invitation to all of our listeners that are hearing this program now. Perhaps you would like to talk to Julie and to Kirby. Why don't you just contact us 
at makeitclear.org. You can write me an email. Contact information is on the website. And that way we will give them your contact information. And that way you can have a conversation with them and pray with them and maybe even ask them some questions. Remember that they see themselves as the things that happened unto them is for the furtherance of the gospel. And they want to help you. And so if you're going through some tough times right now and you need to talk to someone, have prayer, then be sure to contact us at makeitclear.org. Well, let me invite you to be with us for the next broadcast of Make It Clear. This way we can continue to bring God's word to you clearly and correctly to encourage you and to help you to be able to help others in your glorifying of the Lord. God bless each of you. Thank you. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us Make It Clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.